I was just having a look at your um, your social media and uh, and your website and whatnot, and mm. uh, you guys have got your fingers in all the pies. Like you're doing heaps of stuff. But, like it's not just a record shop. No. We like it's to much more. Yeah, like it's always been a bit of a community based um, record store, I guess. Like or even label, you could say Clarity Records, yeah. and like the hub of it is the shop and. You know, I, I personally have always been involved with the like, music community and uh, this is sort of an extension of it. Yep. And so, yeah, I'm just, I guess I've, uh, this is an expansion of what I've always been doing, but just continually building on, yeah, just everything I've always been doing, like, you know, playing in bands, releasing records, putting on shows and yep. All of that. So. so bringing all those like kind of personal experiences and, and expertise and putting them into something that yeah. uh, other people can use as well. Like, um, yeah, I saw Clarity Records. You've got a few, you've got a few releases. Do you put artists on the label and is, is that a thing or? Yeah, we do. Yeah, that's like a real casual sort of uh, thing. Like when we started the store, it was always going to be, you know, if the right thing comes along, we'll release something yep. um, under the label and help bands out. And we, like we always said, it will be Adelaide based. Um, yep. You know, and uh, generally these bands are like also friends of ours. So, yeah, you know, yeah. it's a pretty casual sort of agreement. Like we've had the experience with releasing records like uh, with my music or with other bands in the past. So, um, yeah, we thought we'd use that experience and put it. How, how many it. bands are you in? At the moment, uh, I am just in two. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, through the years I've played in quite a few. Yeah. Is that still Sex Wizard? Uh, no, I never played oh. in Sex Wizard. Um, oh damn, it's on your label though. I just saw it before. I'm like, fucking Sex Wizard. How good a name is that? <laughs> so good, yeah, and such a good band. But no, I I am um, I play in a band called Stolen Youth. That's been like we've been going for nearly 19 years now. Yeah, right. And one of the guys I play with in Stolen Youth plays in Sex Wizard. So, yeah, there's a connection there. Yeah, yeah. Well, good friends. So, yeah, we put out their record oh, ages ago now. Yeah, yeah, it's been at least five years ago. And and it's pretty much punk, hardcore, heavy. That's that's the uh, the forte? Yeah, we're, we're open to anything, really. If yeah. it sounds good and we like the people and... You know, we think it works with what we're doing in the shop. Then yeah, yeah we yeah. do it. Like for example, um, our last release was uh, Hydro Medusa, who are more of like a, I guess, a stoner rock and roll band. Yep. Uh, before that, we did West Theberton, um Seven Inch, which you know they're more of a garage band. And then before that, we did uh, Canada, who are a post rock band. So yeah, yeah. So, so it's a fair you know varied mix that uh, that comes through yeah. what would you say your um your your main clientele that you see coming through the store because there aren't many record stores about anywhere let alone adelaide but mm. you know there's it's becoming a smaller and smaller industry yeah yeah um our main clientele's i'm gonna say um it's, it's a bit of a mix it's uh, we have a lot of regulars but it's from you know your average triple j sort of listener who's yeah out to grab the latest release to um, business people who uh, work in the area who come down most lunch breaks and uh, go through our secondhand bins or yep. yeah um, like we do have we're not a hardcore punk metal shop or anything but we do have a strong focus in that sort of area and so yep. we have people who are fans in that sort of uh, genre and you know um, uh, genres are like yeah. Um, with that so yeah you I mean, know such a broad Adelaide's range Adelaide's always had a pretty good like hardcore scene or mm. like punk scene or just just in a grunge to heavy kind of scene and and um you know one of the guys I interviewed the other week uh Jordan um uh from uh now I'm gonna forget the business name guitar maker on Hindley Street anyway okay but um yeah he he was saying the same thing like I'd never heard of a fucking guitar maker to be on on Hindley Street like that's just ridiculous and he's like yeah man it's just it just popped up it's just kind of nestled in there next to Enigma and yep. perfect place if people are like breaking shit and needs it fixed <laughs> I'm like next door and I'm open late most nights I'm like Fuck that's sake, awesome man. yeah it's, it's crazy the amount of you know, you guys are kind of nestled away in the same the same little aspect that yep. uh, down near Hungry Jacks, down near uh, what's that uh, that Thai or Vietnamese place next? Yeah, door like Soy Thirty Eight. It's called. Yeah, yeah. 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 So like, I, I feel like you know, it's close enough to Rundle Mall that we do get that foot traffic, but yeah, it's just like slightly off. So 
if you're sort of not on the main strip, you might not notice that we're there. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like a, a, a nice little tuck away. Yeah. And you've got... Um, I, I went in there. I, I had a class of people with me uh, a couple of months ago and half of us kind of went into your shop and had a look at some music stuff and then there's a few of them that are just anime love all of the, uh, the the Japanese culture and stuff like that and they're just like in that shop next door oh, yep, pissing yep. themselves laughing going, oh my god look at all these things what the fuck is all these trinkets and stuff man do you get the crossover of, of people going vice versa into a into the uh, different demographic stores and just going wow that was different <laughs> definitely yeah like um, you know and I don't want to be too um, you know stereotypical and stuff but yeah, this, yeah. this happens like where you know one partner will come in and look at the records and the other partner will go next door and look at the, you know, trinkets that they got, yep, whatever. Yep. And and it's great. Like we're friends with the people next door and there is a little bit of a crossover as well where they sell music related, I don't know, whatever, like, for example, they've, <laughs> they've got, got everything and anything yeah, in that like, place, man. They've got David Bowie cushions and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, right. And then we've got, uh, you know, like, uh, badges or like you know um, enamel pins or earrings and stuff that all yeah. like sort of music related, related but it's sort of stuff they could stock as well so I know it, it, I feel like the two shops work hand in hand as well yeah yeah it's a, it's a neat neat little uh, little setup down there yeah. I reckon it was fucking pretty cool but um, so you're how, how the hell did you go about starting up a record store it's uh, not going to be the easiest thing to get up and stocked and mm. Uh, you know how do you choose what music you're going to stock and you know do you get help with that or yeah so yeah it was crazy like thinking about it now is uh yeah at the, at the time i yeah <laughs> literally it like, was there'd so be tons stressful. of records and yeah yeah so the way i sort of got started was i um beforehand i worked at big star records on rundle street and yep. i was there for nearly five years and um you know, uh, I sort of got a lot of knowledge on what to do and especially what not to do when running a business. Yep. And through that, like I went to that working into that, just being strictly that young, snotty punk kid being like, I only listen to hardcore and punk. Um, that would have been the sickest job though, man. Like when you got that job, were you just fucking stoked? Like, holy fuck fuck i'm working in a fucking yeah. record store yeah it's dude it was like I, I went from being fruit and veg boy at foodland oh. to um to working in a record store and i was just like like still to this day it is the best job i've ever had and that i'll ever have because yeah. you know you know owning your own business is the best and um and you know i wouldn't do it any other way but there's something about working at an independent record store where you like rocking up and uh you know, you don't have to worry about anything. You worry about yep. doing your own job. You don't have to worry about paying bills or anything. And yep. yeah, and you're working with a bunch of people who are always like showing you new music and like-minded like individuals and exactly. And yep. you know, got all the characters that come along with it. But um, but anyway, yeah. So um, Big Star was closing down, and I'm like, oh, what the hell am I gonna do? And um, I was like, there's no way I'm going back to working for the man or like working yep. in some shitty job somewhere. So. I uh, always thought about opening up my own store and um, yeah, um, it's funny. I was walking past the spot that um, that our shop is in and a for lease sign recently went up and I thought, I've always thought it'd be wicked to have a record store there. I applied um, and yeah, we got the spot. Um, yeah, so sorry. Um, yeah, Big Star closed down and yeah. um, I bought a bunch of their racks and stuff. And yeah. so that like literally when we opened everything in the shop was second hand except for the computer screen uh like we yeah just we grabbed any, anything and everything we could from anywhere and um in terms of stock um you know i learned a lot working for big star so i was i got an idea on what to order of course like with a limited budget we um we could only order so much yeah yeah and we got a lot from um you know labels and uh artists around australia on consignment as well yep. and that's how we sort of started and then just through the years, just built it up. And, and is, is that still a big part of your business, that consignment side of things and getting those, you know, those unknown bands or those 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 bands that are starting out and, and you know, giving them a, a bit of a platform mm. as well that I saw on your website, you do some consignment stuff and it seems like pretty reasonable terms and, and, and everything mm. as well. So like that, that's that got to be a pretty important thing. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, it was always um, starting the shop was always about supporting independent music and yeah. um, especially within Australia. So yeah, um, yeah, we still do a lot of that with local labels and um, and bands to make sure that uh, you know that their stuff is physically in shops. As um, you know, in Adelaide, I can't you know. There's a few stores that maybe do bits and pieces, but we want it to be yeah. the 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 go to place. And so yeah, um, yeah, it's so important that uh, artists have a place to like. Uh, stock physical releases not only because yeah. it's you know for a band like walking into a shop thinking like bloody hell it's cool having our own like release in a shop but also so their fans can go out and um and yeah buy physical releases and and still there's like that sorry. element ah, that's cool <coughs> sorry you're right man it's it's cool that there's still that element that um that I think's <coughs> lost a lot that um that people uh they don't get to go out and discover music. Mm. Like they don't get to go out and like rifle. Like I used to love that man. You just go into any big star or or friends of mine used to own Bank Street Records and you go in there and you fucking just just sift through every every CD, every bit of vinyl, every single thing. And like you could go through the same routine every weekend, mm. but then you'd you'd know what was still there. You'd know what was sold. You'd mm. you know oh man fuck did you sell that record man yeah, yeah man we sold that last <laughs> week like that kind of stuff like it's 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 a lost thing you know it's, it's uh, a lot of people don't get the uh, the opportunity mm. to, to be able to experience it yeah and it's that's that's how i sort of grew up listening and buying and discovering new music just yeah. going into the record store and just you know every single time once a week just going through the local artists and stuff and you know going through the punk section and you know something will pop up that i don't know what it is and yeah. i'd buy and check it out or or you know listen to it before i buy and uh, yeah, it's just the way of discovering new music, and you know we we see that within uh, in our shop as well, um, especially with a lot of uh, tourists uh, in state and overseas. They'll come in and be like, "We want a couple of CDs or a couple of records to take home of the best Adelaide music going around at the moment." Yeah, and it's like, sweet, I can show you exactly what's popular, what sounds good, and yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and and that's a privilege to be able to do that. You know, it's mm. it, that's that's pretty cool to be able to uh, almost be that connoisseur that people get to uh, just come by, leave, yep. have a memory, yeah, have everything fucking sitting there and <laughs> nice and hunky dory. But um, do do you find that uh, we were just talking before we went on about uh, online stores and and um, you know the internet is is a thing apparently these days. So. Do you, do you see that as a competitor or something just a tool that you can use to be able to further what you do already? Uh, it's a bit of both. Um, it's definitely a useful tool for people to, to discover music. Yep. Um, try before you buy as well. Um, yeah, and there's, you know, it just opens up a whole world of new music to people that you wouldn't get that op- opportunity to discover if the internet wasn't there. Yeah. But then, yeah, it, you know, it's certainly, you know, the statistics show that uh, sales have rapidly declined because of downloads or streaming or, you know, not necessarily with vinyl because vinyl can, continues to um, increase. Vinyl's every growing, year. isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And apparently in the UK, it uh, outsold digital sales, not not streaming, but like um, digital sales, I think last year or like the year CDs before. CDs and stuff. Uh, no, nah, well, no, nah, I didn't outsell CDs, but, um, outsold like digital purchases. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Like, uh, I think iTunes, I, I don't know. Yeah. Those, <laughs> I'm no one answer. Of those things. Yeah. 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 But like, it's fucking going pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, if it wasn't for vinyl, um, independent stores wouldn't exist. I don't think yeah. like, um, yeah, before we opened, I could see vinyl was gaining momentum and i thought you know uh, there's a market here and we wouldn't have done it if we didn't see that because cds was just it was bottoming bottoming out big time and yeah there is still a market for cds um don't get me wrong and that's why you know half the shop of ours is still cds but vinyl is bread and butter yeah yeah and so is it about half half that you have compared vinyl cds or Oh, uh, you know, it's definitely more vinyl, um, but uh, yeah, we do do have a solid range of CDs yeah. as well. Yeah, and so like it, it's a it's kind of a strange dynamic, isn't it? Like I I look at CDs like being you know being able to look back in time now mm. and look at it as like it's the epitome of the eighties. Yeah, it's just the cheapest thing that you can put something on and make it play again, and 
and it was sold to everybody like this fucking magical thing that was gonna just be the craziest music experience in your life you'll never fucking hear anything better than a cd and and like you know of course the sound quality is fucking great but but mm. it somehow doesn't have the nostalgic feel of what the whole process of playing vinyl is mm. and and it's not just what you hear and the way that you hear it but it's going through and fucking you know make sure everything's clean and fucking getting the stylus on and fuck it's just a whole different process yeah and the whole packaging as well and yeah, like you yeah. know just holding out it's bigger yeah. you can get yeah. sick art yeah it's it's some cool fucking shit that comes out on on vinyl and and i i'm really glad to hear that that's making a, a you know more of an impression or a comeback as such because mm. uh, there's there's a lot of like that also that miss part of opening a cover and and having like this fucking beautiful art and music all in the same thing and yeah um yeah you you certainly don't get that feeling when you fucking download a song it's uh <laughs> it's pretty exactly yeah personal yeah you, kind you of thing sort of get a file on your computer and you, you look at it and like not as exciting no 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 mm. so you guys also have um I reckon like one of the coolest ideas that that I've seen only came across it like uh, I think last year is the first time that I heard of Day of Clarity. Yep. And uh, how how did that all start and when did it start? Yeah. Um. So it started uh, four years ago. Um. Yeah. Uh. I basically came up with the idea of um. Yeah. Uh. Booking a festival surrounded on the east end with using all our favorite venues over there and yep. just like just making a free festival so you can move from um vineyard venue see the bands that you want to see um the idea basically came about uh, there's sort of similar things that happen over in america like um south by southwest or yep. that's which is more industry based or um another one called the fest um i don't think it's free to attend the fest but it's very similar like um in gainesville they have uh, all, all the venues um, in one area have different yeah. shows, and people can move from venue to venue. Um, so yeah, leading up to that, um, we sort of did everything, um, something once a year for our anniversary uh, of the yep. shop uh, in April. Um, so yeah, just to celebrate, we'd put a show on at say Enigma or Crown and Anchor or whatever, and yep. uh, yeah, I think it was our uh, fifth year. Um, of the shop and we sort of thought let's do something a bit bigger yeah. and the idea fifth of, birthday yeah I yeah think. you know like five years of uh, owning an independent retail store was yeah we're pretty proud of that that's so we thought re- yeah. like, and when you put it like that an independent retail store man that's a fucking good effort to get through the first six month year two years mm. like it's it's not an easy thing to do so yeah that's definitely worth celebrating but like that's a fucking a free music festival that involves small businesses or medium-sized businesses that are established in adelaide bricks and mortars they're paying fucking through the roof to be here as well mm. and it's something that's bringing punters back into the city mm. that isn't just to get smashed it's to yeah. see bands it's to be part of a, a bigger thing it's uh of course you can get smashed i guess when you're, <laughs> when you're there but uh yeah it's uh what what was the most difficult thing that you found when you uh, first came up with the idea and how, how oh. did you get the the wheels in motion uh the most difficult thing was just like yeah just pulling it all together really just yeah you know it was not it was nowhere near as big as what it uh is now yeah like when we first started um yeah just yeah just the, the scheduling of it all and you know just trying to sell it to the bands as well being like hey we've got this idea what do you think and obviously our budget was pretty low at that stage yep. as well um you know um and 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 yeah i just you know just to sidetrack just slightly i sort of you know not only was it a um anniversary uh for the shop we'll just sort of like uh yeah i've i've been involved with music for i I couldn't tell you how long now like 20 years or whatnot and i started going to shows when i was like 13 14 sort of thing and the there's like uh, just there's no youth going to shows these days mainly because they can't uh because of uh liquor licensing and stuff like that but yeah. also because um i guess i what well, i think uh technology these days as well it's so much easier for people to sit at home in front of their devices or whatever that might might yeah. be yeah and not go to shows discover new music discover 
um, yeah, the local scene. Anyway, so this festival was to get people out and about and uh, hence why it's free and to really like, we, we wanted people to discover their new favorite local band or, yeah. or whatnot yeah. or interstate band and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so I guess sort of pitching that idea to bands being, and getting them on board to start off with and of also the venues um, being like, oh, hey, what do you reckon about this idea? And thankfully the venues were like, yeah, really excited about the idea. And Dude, if I owned a yeah. pub and I had someone come up to me and say, hey, mate, I'm going to fucking get heaps of people here and there's going to be live music, there's going to be all this shit, I'd be like, fucking here's the yeah. keys, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go with it. That so, sounds awesome. So, yeah, it's just grown every year and it's gone from like, you know, I can't remember how many bands we first had. Like, it might might have been like sixteen or twenty bands over the four venues, and then yep. now it's like seven or eight venues with like forty to fifty artists, sort of thing. And that's yeah. fucking amazing. And now we've got like, yeah, some of the biggest um, booking agents in Australia contacting me, being like, "Oh, hey, can we get this artist on our festival and you yeah. know we just want to keep it as local as we can but it's cool to have those bigger interstate bands come over to play um you know brings different crowd and you know well, that, I mean, that's right and, and and that's part of what is getting so hard in in i guess entertainment and, and being able to go out these days is that the less people that go out the less venues are inspired to be able to put it on the less mm. chance that people from interstate are going to come to adelaide and and you know it, it still makes me laugh every time i see people whinging that fucking you know i don't know taylor swift <laughs> won't come to adelaide or fucking blah 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 I'm like, well of course you're not you're not going to get all the big hitters mm. to come to the little place when you have no established part of people going out and and someone said to me it's not that people in adelaide don't go to it mm. it's that people in adelaide don't book early to mm. go to anything they don't give any promoters confidence in actually being able to put a show on and do something and yeah. and i think that by people like yourself getting yeah. shit happening yeah. <laughs> and actually doing it and saying hey look at this yeah this is a thing and and you know you you, you can have some sort, type of security of, of putting stuff on here like that's mm. that's a hugely important thing so who, who were the major supporters behind you know being able to you know have this kind of thing eventuate did you get help from the city council or state government or anyone eventually yes um first couple of years was just simply um money out of our own pockets and yeah. um and uh venue guarantees like we sort of like proved ourselves in the in the first year and the venues um well the crown and anchor mainly yeah. they're like they've been so supportive and without them we this wouldn't have been able to become what it is today and yeah. um they're like you know we'll give you this m amount of money see how it goes and um yeah if it, if it's going well we'll contribute a bit more next year and we'll sort of assess it year by year and turns out to be not only their busiest day but the busiest day for every venue involved on the calendar year so bigger than fringe Bigger than fringe time. Yep. Fuck yeah, man. Yep. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah, like there's there's times where, yeah, I think last year they were just like, this is the biggest day we've ever had. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, that's fantastic. That's that's exactly what we wanted um, for the, the festival to do because uh, we wanted to bring people to the venues. And, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, like that's support their businesses amazing. as well. That's exactly right. And I know that, you know, the Crown and Anchor is one of my most adored pubs in the world mm. it is just a fantastic magical grimy dirty fucking yeah. place it's brilliant <laughs> and i i know that they were going through some turmoil or some troubles and and not having you know not being viable anymore and people having to buy them out or do something and, and i don't know the whole fucking story behind yeah. it but um it was it was so disappointing to i remember reading like what the fuck man they want to shut down the cranker that is bullshit you can't yeah. fucking shut down the cranker it's great that there are people that you know out thinking outside of the square mm. but not thinking all about themselves either it's like it's for the it's the greater good it's all of that <laughs> kind of shit but it's fucking it people need to do that stuff man because otherwise there's no platform for for anybody to to succeed yeah. so yeah. it's a Thanks. <laughs> no, that's all right. And um, thanks, man. It's, it's also our way of saying uh, thanks to, you know, the greater, the wider community as well, yeah. because at, at the end of the day, they've so shown our um, business venture support. We've been able to operate for nine years now. Um, yeah. And this is also our way of saying thanks to them. Like, here, yeah. here's a free music festival. This is more your festival than what it is ours. Like, you know, um, yeah. 
yeah, it's, 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 it's exciting to uh, like what it's become. And, and yeah, well, just quickly expanding on what you were saying before, like since then, like um, RTSA has really gone behind it and um, like we've applied for a grant the last couple of years and we've successfully got that. Yeah. So that, that shows that they're really supportive. And uh, yeah, we've had the city of Adelaide contact us a couple of times saying, hey, you should really go for this grant because... Yeah. Um, yeah, because we really like what you're doing. So, yeah. So, who who's writing the grants and stuff like that for you? <laughs> Me. Yeah? It's tricky, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dude, like, seriously. it's People don't understand that, like, you know, it's a whole year's process of booking um, booking the show. Like, you know, there are people coming into the shop after the festival and be like, oh, you must be so relieved. Like, it's all over. You can relax now. It's like, no, nah, literally two weeks after that festival finished, I started writing my art grant application for, for the next one, the next year, yep. because, you know, that that's how far in advance you got to do them. And, yep. um, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not, it's not an easy thing to write for a grant. Like oh, not it's, at all, technical no. writing is, is, um, it's a whole new fucking world. Like you mm. have to be super, super direct you have mm-hmm. to have everything just easy to read, making sure everything's in line, making sure there aren't any fucking things that might even give someone an inkling yeah. of, wait a minute, <laughs> these motherfuckers know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing as well. I'm not the greatest at English. I'm not the greatest at maths, but you, i got to write, you know, it was a 40 to 50 page document, yep. our, our applications and, um, you know, with detailed um, budgets and stuff like that. And yeah how do you do that a year out from the festival Man, like, that's exactly yeah. right how do you and how how do you do that how do you get the fucking motivation to do that because <laughs> man, sometimes it's the cold deep of winter and <laughs> yeah well that's <laughs> it's it. like shit ain't looking good it's hard and you still gotta yeah. still gotta pick yourself up and get shit done and thankfully in the cold deep of winter uh sometimes it can be quiet days at the shop so that's when yeah. i'm like okay i can't procrastinate procrastinate today it's grant writing time so and so it's yourself and your partner that run the shop yeah so myself and uh my wife laura we um yeah we own the shop together partnership and yeah she works at the shop and you know i uh, you know i say outright i feel a bit bad because um you know a lot of people say you know, associate you know oh clarity and footy but it's more you know it's foot, Laura and footy is you yeah, know, yeah. as how, like how'd you, you know, get the nickname footy <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that before I'm like footy yeah wait yeah. a minute his last name isn't foot it's got to be a story behind this <laughs> yeah in um uh at school in year eight I, I was playing football um PE and uh standing behind the goal I was talking to someone and got hit in the head with the football and I went down like a ton of bricks and everyone of course thought it was funny and then whatever next day comes doing the exact same thing you know lightning doesn't strike twice but of course it does but this time i get winded with by the football and <laughs> someone thought it was really funny they called me footy and it literally caught on like wildfire and yeah. that's how i got my nickname it's not because i'm good at good at football or anything it's <laughs> like terrible at football. I'm just like oh i'm an accident waiting to happen yeah <laughs> yeah and you're also so you play bass as well I do, yeah, yeah, and Stolen Youth and um, many other bands through the past, yeah. How long? How long have you been a bass player? Um, I picked up the bass when I when I joined the band, um, which was in <laughs> two thousand and two. Um, yeah. Before I played basic guitar, so picking up bass like was like, oh, thank you. I can I, I can I only need to play one string, let alone uh, <laughs> there's no. I don't have to worry about playing six strings. So yeah. um, that was a blessing in disguise, and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah done amazing things with the band since then as well so yeah yeah yeah. so you guys um you've always been together how many things have you released um i was trying to find a few bits and pieces on on you guys before and i was listening to i listened to a couple of tracks that i found on soundcloud i was like fuck man this is all right this is like i wrote it down it was like i had a mix between i think toe to toe and pennywise and something else i couldn't quite put my finger on i was like this is fucking cool i actually and and uh, I think Sex Wizard. I was just like, that's Blood Duster. Oh, what the hell, man? And I put on Porn Store Stiffy straight away. <laughs> that's wicked. Like, man, these people in this fucking office block aren't going to like me at the moment. But uh, yeah, PA set up with fucking Porn Store Stiffy fucking blaring. So. <laughs> nice, nice. But yeah, we put out uh, two albums and you know, a bunch of EPs and seven inch. And yeah. we're just we're going to record a new album next year. There's been a bit of time between like. Um, uh, between albums because uh, 
recently our singer was in Japan for two years. Um, our our drummer Dave had was about to have his third kid, and I, I had a kid uh, four years ago. So yeah, <laughs> so like, everyone's you know, been busy. Yeah, you know, <laughs> living <laughs> life. Never short of things to do, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So we remain pretty active. Like we've toured Europe and Japan and New Zealand and Australia. Like, like we just come off an Australian tour actually. So, yeah, that's really good. fucking active, man. Yeah, yeah. What's it like touring Japan? Oh, amazing! Like, I've been. That would be sick. Japan is the best place in the world, other than Adelaide, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've been there three times myself. Uh, yeah, and I can't wait to go back. It's just two things i love music and record shopping uh which is basically the same thing anyway um and they've got it all and yeah. the people are amazing um yeah japan has to be done have, like, you, have yeah. you seen that uh that doco they've got on tower records oh, i haven't seen that yet no Dude, hey it's a good thing to fucking watch that man yeah. like you definitely have to watch <laughs> that shit it is it's a really fucking cool story man and and it's as it's one of the coolest parts of it i won't Try, I'll try not to spoil anything for you. Yeah, yeah, um, right. But uh, the coolest part is that after everything that happens in the whole of, you know, a big conglomerate of of huge, like probably the biggest fucking record store chain ever, mm. it's all gone and it still exists in Japan. Yeah. yeah. And the dude who, who kind of started it, or he, he goes to Japan and just walks into the store and he's, he's like just tearing up, just going, fuck me, <laughs> this is exactly the same, man. This is everything like down to all the handwritten shit and you know mm. you can see where jb hi-fi got their inspiration from it was definitely from yep. fucking tower records and and uh just an amazing thing i guess on that i mean how did how does an independent shop go against those big conglomerates in, in this day and age like, oh, it's so hard yeah like you know at the end of the day people are also on tight budgets as well and so you sort of got to uh, you got well, we we always try our best to make sure that we're, if we're not on par then we're either just a little bit cheaper or you know around about the point of what those big yep. shops are so um whereas you know beforehand jb hi-fi didn't stock vinyl and that was a that was amazing for us yep. and now they do it's never it hasn't effect, affected us but it's competition at the end of the day yep. so we just got to be smart about what we stock and how we price our records so yeah we always you know making sure we concentrate on more yeah again what we originally why we originally opened those doors because for independent artists and for artists that won't get stocked in uh those bigger chain stores yeah. um and yeah and and be good to our customers essentially and you know not try and rip them off by putting you know, exuberant prices on that stuff yeah and stuff, so. yeah and i guess by having a good just good range yeah yeah you know, exactly just, just have it there and 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 i i, th I think um you know it, it it sounds almost wrong of somebody going to jb hi-fi to buy vinyl mm. it's you know it doesn't something's not quite right it's like yeah. you know getting french pastries from well actually no it's exactly <laughs> like getting fruit from an on the run yeah like that always <laughs> freaks me out i'm like Dude, that's a fucking four dollar fifty banana that you're getting from the servo, man. What the fuck yeah. is happening in this world, man? This is so weird. And then I and I'm walking out with a banana and a fucking on the run like bottle of water that cost me fifty bucks. It's probably fucking tap water, but yeah, it's um it certain things just kind of go together and they suit each other. And and one of them definitely isn't like vinyl and JB Hi-Fi. And yeah, uh, it's. It's kind of strange. <laughs> yeah, like I've I've heard people refer to it as record shopping, but I I don't. Um, I refer to it as, you know, going to shop to buy a record. Like you know, whereas record shopping is like you know the experience of going to that independent shop and just like digging in deep and what whatnot. You know, it's yeah. just there's yeah. I I I hear what you mean, and I. 100% agree it's it's a different vibe going into a supermarket to buy a record or, absolutely or, man yeah. and and like I mean, like you you guys seem to have a good flow of secondhand stuff coming in and obviously some collectors and people that come in and trade things and, and do their thing and mm. I can't see that kind of stuff being what the uh, business model of JB Hi-Fi is ever going to be able to <laughs> not at all <laughs> ever going to be able to do yeah but, and, uh, and there's like a lot of people also comment about the whole um, customer relation thing as well like you know, building up a, a good relationship with your regulars or people who yeah. go into JB Hi-Fi and get the get a person working the, behind the counter who, and you know, no disrespect to anyone working at JB, um, but um, they might not know as much as someone um, 
compared to working at an independent record store. Yeah, with, you're with eating, sleeping, yeah. breathing that whole thing, and yeah. that's all you're doing. You're not selling washing machines yeah, in between. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And and by all means, look, I, I think that, um, you know, it's easy to, like, Australians are so good at tall poppy syndrome, so it's fucking so easy to pick on cunts that are massive. Yeah, It's like, yeah. fuck JB Hi-Fi, man. <laughs> but I'll still go to JB Hi-Fi to buy a whole bunch of shit. And, and there are... There are to, to be on the positive side of somebody like JB Hi-Fi is that they're a great employer of alternative people as well. Mm, yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've just been to some job interviews and stuff myself and, and one of the, I don't know, it, it might just be me, but one of the strangest things that I've come across is people, like they said to me, like, yeah, if you're coming tomorrow for this interview, you better wear a tie. Yeah. I'm like a tie. I fucking hate wearing <laughs> ties, man. And uh, so I had to go buy a tie and, and uh, the guys fit me out and he's... He's like, get your shirt done up and all that stuff. And it's like, this thing's strangling me. Yeah, like, yeah. What the hell? Why are we <laughs> doing this? Why, why can't we be judged on our worth and not by our tie? And yeah, it's exactly. It's just such a strange fucking thing. Yeah. At least they do employ people that uh, have the piercings, have tattoos, have the <laughs> coloured hair and, and kind of change, I think, a lot of people's mm. uh, stigma about alternative people working in retail or, or yeah. you know, front-end jobs and stuff like that. So Yeah, and also I've got a lot of friends that work there or like people I don't know, but they know the shop and so many times people are like, oh, walk in the shop. Oh, someone from JB Hi-Fi sent me here. Yeah. They said you might have this. Like, yes, we do. And now we've got a regular customer because of that. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, that's... You know, there's to every good, there's bad and vice yeah. versa or whatever. So, you know, I don't see them as a threat or anything. Like to do, our business, do you so. see them? And I know it's a common thing for people in retail to go like, all right, that massive dude's selling this and this and this, so I'm not going to stock it. I'm not going to compete with them. Do, do you find that, is it, I always thought the opposite. Like, mm. you know, it's free advertising. If yeah. those dudes are going to stock that and fucking let everybody know that this is a thing. Mm. I may as well pick up some crumbs. Yeah. There's no fucking beef with anyone like that, but how, how, do, how do you go with that kind of um, thing? If people are asking for it, then I'll stock it. Yeah. That's, that's my um, philosophy. Um, so, you know, for example, someone like Ed Sheeran or Taylor Swift, who's like, you know, when I first opened the shop, <laughs> I wouldn't even consider like you yep. know i would yeah i would be very angry at the person talking now <laughs> about stocking that stuff <laughs> however people ask for it and yep. you know if we don't supply it then they'll just go down to the next shop and buy it um so every now and then we'll stock something like that where you know something jb hi-fi might be selling you know literally bucket loads of and we we'll, might stock one or two just in case someone wants to pick up you know yeah couple of local records and a taylor swift record with it so, so do you stock taylor swift not right now but, but you have oh wait we have yeah i do have a taylor swift record in there yeah <laughs> sorry what about merch have you got any any swifty merch <laughs> no no but that reminds me of like you know when ed sheeran was in town we did um uh um ed sheeran pop-up shop where literally clarity was transformed transformed into an ed sheeran shop for the day no shit. Um, yeah, like basically um, a merch stall where you could only get exclusive merch for his tour, not at the show, but at Clarity Records. Yeah. So how the hell did that come about? They contacted us and we were like, so wait, they were doing that at, um, at independent shop, uh, shops, at, like one in each state that he was playing. Yeah. And we we're like, how do we say no to that if we don't say yes they would just go somewhere else and yeah, we yeah. want to keep that relationship with uh all those industry types oh ones. absolutely so, you know and again like positive uh positive things came from it like we we're on the news and um you know nova did a whole broadcast thing for it and yeah. you know now we and we've got regular customers now because yeah a lot so, of people know you know. where you are and that you exist and <laughs> you know all those things it's, it's exactly and sometimes like you know you got to think business like whereas you know yeah yeah you got to push that sort of punk yeah ethos that 17 aside, just year like, old punk in the back of yeah. your head going fuck man what are you yeah. doing to you're yourself, a sellout bro yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah i used to it, it, man it used to be funny like back in the day and and um you know particularly i, I reckon like pennywise probably copped at fucking heaps offspring definitely copped at fucking heaps and and just being that sellout band and 
and and uh, I remember like mates of mine, um, they would only like, oh man, about time's the best fucking Pennywise album fucking ever. Fuck full circle, man. I'm not <laughs> listening to that shit anymore. And and yeah. I think uh, when Frenzel came out with uh, a man's not a camel, it's like this isn't fucking punk. Yeah. What the fuck is this shit? And like, man, I really like this album. This bullshit album. Yeah, like, yeah. Fucking sellouts. Fucking sellouts. <laughs> and it was just, you know that. I guess that grunge punk fucking skater scene that anybody who made money off of anything was automatically a sellout and they're a fucking asshole. Yeah, <laughs> don't, just... <laughs> don't worry. I like, it, it regrets me to say it, but I had like every single Friends of Rom CD, or, like even all the sing- CD yeah, singles, yeah, and, yeah. Like, every single one. And then they were, <laughs> once they were on Hey Hey, it's Saturday. <laughs> the next day I went to my CD collection, got them all down to Big Star Basement to trade them in for like, <laughs> I probably got like 10 bucks for the whole lot or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, that's and, it. Yeah, yeah. And now I was off them for years. And I'm like, hang on a second. I do really like that band. And yeah. Yeah. yeah look, I, was, I was still like Frenzel, but I, I didn't like fucking Lindsay on Triple J. <laughs> like, he just shit me. He was just a fucking, just like, shut the fuck up, Lindsay. Let people have a different opinion than yours, man. Like, we don't all have to fucking agree with fucking Lindsay and do everything like, fucking Lindsay, fuck Lindsay. <laughs> oh, but I love your records, man. <laughs> it was fucking very, very, like, confusing time. I'm glad that dude ain't on the radio anymore. Nah, he's, he's not. Yeah, he's a legend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, man, like, uh, who was it? Phil from uh, Grinspoon. Oh, yeah. Phil from Grinspoon. I mean, Grinspoon, fantastic fucking band and... Um, you know, a band that I kind of not forgot about, but forgot how good they were until they kind of came back and had their little comeback fucking pub tour of, of last year or the year before or whatever it was. And yeah. it was like, fuck, man, this band is really good. Mm. And this band back in the day, and you see some of their, like, especially their live stuff that was on recovery and stuff. Like, I remember seeing them live back in the day and going, they're fucking sick. They mm. put on such a good show. And then forgetting about that and remembering it and seeing it and, and looking on YouTube and looking at recovery performances and shit like that and big day out live performances, you're like, fuck yeah, man, they were good. <laughs> but then I just saw that like Phil Jamison is making an appearance by himself at the Slug and Lettuce in Salisbury. And I'm yeah. thinking, fuck, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> that is selling out, yeah, man. Yeah, like, yeah, come on, yeah, dude. Yeah. You, you could definitely do better than that. Yeah, definitely. Just get the band back together again and do another round of... The, the yeah. Australia or something yeah. I don't know yeah but the yeah. you know Henry Rollins can get away with a fucking spoken tour I don't know if that's what Phil's planning but <laughs> I don't know if he can get away with that no it's, I don't think so no yeah he's he's fucking yeah, he's <laughs> off the rails poor old Phil so who are your who are your favourite bands at the moment and are they still old ones are they uh, are they new new people on the horizon or yep my, my favourite band of all time is Propagandy and yep. has been for a very 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 long time and still has uh, still is and probably still will be until like forever forever or until they release that sellout album where yep. yeah <laughs> 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 they sign to a major label and no nah, no nah, nah, i doubt they would ever do that but yep. yeah them and minor threat is my other big nice favorite um yeah. and yeah, still, still like I still listen to a lot of bands I did. Um, you know, that I listened to growing up through the nineties and stuff like that. Um, and then, like, funny enough, I listen to a lot of different stuff today in the shop. Like, I don't even really like listening to hardcore or punk while I'm at work, just because yeah. it's not good for the customers. But you know, I just sort of get a bit tired of it. So yeah. I yeah. listen to a lot of it's different music. Know, puts different, you in different yeah. moods, man. Like it. it it uh like i find that if i'm doing like really fucking hard work and i'm like really trying to fucking concentrate on putting something together i put on podcasts in the background and i can concentrate brilliantly if i put mm. any music that i like i stop working on it and i start listening like it it's just a just a weird thing and there is no way i could listen to punk or hardcore or anything mm. while i'm trying to concentrate like that because it's just it's music that you should probably move to yeah <laughs> it's music yeah that exactly you need to, like you know, just, ah, get shit happening and, <laughs> and like get out there. But um, what what were yeah. you listening to in the shop? Oh, like, well, today I listened to um, a bit of Bonobo. Don't know if you know Bonobo, no, but no. like, yeah, he's like a, um, like sort of a producer, like beatsy sort of stuff, but more on the chill sort of side with, yep. you know, female vocals and stuff. And yeah, I, also I, I listened to Stolen Youth. Uh, Stolen Youth. <laughs> I'm in Stolen Youth. 
<laughs> Sonic Youth, I was going to say. Who, you know, growing up, I... I did I, see you had a washing machine t-shirt in your front window the yeah. other night. It was fucking two o'clock in the morning and I was walking past Paro. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, man. Yeah. I used to love that t-shirt. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, growing up, I... I despise Sonic Youth, but now, you know, I, I really like him. Um, I also was listening to a bit of Dinosaur Jr. I love Dinosaur Jr. Yeah. And, um, and um, uh, probably in the last 10 years as well, I've um, gone back and I'm a big uh, record collector myself and I try and collect almost everything Australian punk. And um, yeah, I've just been trying to go back as far as I can and discover as many... Um, you know, uh, bands that, you know, I might not have heard of before. So yeah. there's a few compilations that feature these bands. So I listen to a lot of that as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So who's yeah. popping on an Australian punk scene at the moment or Adelaide punk's punk scene at the moment? Um, well, in terms of punk in Adelaide, I'd say probably High Time is one of the biggest well-known bands in Australia yeah. at the moment or... You know, I wouldn't classify West Theberton as punk, but, um, you know, they're guys that have been involved with the punk scene for many years and stuff like that. But, you know, they're, you know, kicking goals everywhere, like yeah. tour- touring the world. So they're probably one of the biggest bands in Adelaide at the moment. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I, like, I love both those bands. Um, yeah, and uh, in Australia, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I find it hard discovering new punk bands that I love because I always compare them to old bands that I used to listen to and think, <laughs> oh, this is good, but... You're getting to that yeah, age, man. You're I like, know. Oh, it's not as good as the gold years, <laughs> though, man. <laughs> but I love Mind Snare. Mind Snare's been my favourite hardcore band forever, and, um, yeah, I still listen to them today, and, yeah, yeah, I love them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So back in the day, like, bands, um, bands like 28 Days and stuff like that, where they kind of went from being in the more i'd say just kind of punk or pop punk yeah. kind of scene and then hip-hop yeah and they made like this fucking <laughs> it's a weird kind of change like i reckon they pulled it off pretty reasonably but it it do you, do you see people making that kind of that mix of music now like you know a run dmc aerosmith fucking collab kind of thing going on or there probably is uh just don't, but <laughs> just no one don't discover it yeah um uh, well especially not people who have gone from punk to hip-hop or yeah yeah. yeah yeah not that i can think of like probably the only bands that i listen to that do stuff like that like i listen to a band called ceremony who their first couple of albums were just the fastest thrashiest albums you could think of and then all of a sudden they're like a pop sort of joy division sort of yeah right. loner sort of yeah the indie Smiths. sort of yeah yeah, yeah yeah that sort of influence stuff and it's like just extreme changes like that and yeah you know if the album's done well i still really enjoy it sort of thing. yeah and yeah 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 it's one of those things that can be done right or can be done real fucking real fucking wrong yeah and yeah stuff everything <laughs> up but so do you, do you think that um adelaide as a whole like as a music scene as a whole could you put a tag to to what we've got at the moment do you think it's as strong as what it has been or you know are we are we on our way up or down or um i think well in general australian music is massively on the way up like in my say 15 years of being in the music like uh retail um i don't i think we've never sold as much australian based music unless you're like really mainstream sort of like your silver chairs power finger or that sort of stuff um yeah now more than ever before um i think mainly because of the internet or whatnot but yeah that's australian one and it it, uh adelaide um based uh it is definitely really strong um but it's sort of like different pockets i think like and it comes in waves like for example like a few years back maybe like five years ago or whatever hardcore was like you know massive like yeah you know but now not so much there's hardly any hardcore bands around and, yeah, right. and whatnot um and then you know oh, i guess stuff like your west evidence bad dreams and those related sort of bands that sound like that um yeah have massive followings and stuff and yeah 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 like uh, like it just comes in waves and stuff and yeah i think la's always like a we said before Adelaide's always had a strong music scene um but 
it's a bit of a roller coaster scene where like um yeah it chops and changes it, with isn't what's a lot like the time. i mean a lot of um like young people don't stay in adelaide mm. like we don't retain a lot of our talent in heaps of industries is that a similar thing that that happens in the uh, in the music industry um oh i don't think so as much like i th- yeah i don't know it's sort of hard to say um I, like do you mean bands move interstate and yeah, don't, don't it, like necessarily like yeah they don't play as much in Adelaide therefore the people stop coming to shows is that what you mean yeah like if you want to succeed then you need to leave like oh, that okay. kind of attitude like you know if you're going to make it man you got to go to Melbourne and yeah. you've got to start playing shows in Melbourne then you've got to start playing shows in Sydney because you can't just keep fucking playing in Adelaide yeah and um, like, yeah. Th- there has to be some truth to that in, in some way but it 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 seems like in a lot of industries and especially when it comes down to young people mm-hmm. and entertainment industry and things like that that there just isn't enough yeah. to, to hold on to here well um, yeah I'm going to say that it's not the case these days um, yeah. I think you can be from Adelaide and be successful um, and not have to move interstate to become more successful. The reason being is you can be from Adelaide, and um, really at the end of the day, um, if you even if you're a band in Melbourne, you shouldn't be playing every single week or every sing, single month. Even like yeah. um, I think if you're from Adelaide, making your trip to Melbourne or Sydney once every three months or six months, whatever, um, is probably all you need to do. Because I think now more than ever before as well it's an oversaturated scene as well because um uh so many bands are touring um both um nationally and internationally yeah people i know you just like there's only so much people can do so much people can afford and the attention span of people uh yeah. you know isn't that great so like you're not going to sit go out and see the same band every single month or whatnot and you just burn yourself out so yeah. i think if you're a band from adelaide you do it smart and you do it like you know uh interstate trip once every few months or whatever and you know keep building that scene um your fan base in both um the major cities then you'll be all right and especially if you've got um good backing as well like good management or like um booking agents and stuff that get yeah. you on tours and stuff like yeah, that yeah. um yeah, I think that's all part of being getting a bigger industry profile rather than actually moving the whole band and like yeah you know, yeah having to yeah. do that because I think back in the day you probably would have had to like move into state and like work hard at playing that sort of like pub scene or whatever yeah, and that's constantly right. doing it and that like I don't think you can do that these days like no. yeah and again like also like the cost of living as well is just out of control and ridiculous man and people like and now paying like a hundred bucks to go see like a you know a substandard international band or like even some australian bands that aren't even that big are paying like um costing like 40 bucks to go see them and that's just like ridiculous yeah. like gone are the days of you know 10 15 shows for like semi big bands yeah and, you know Oh, you yeah. definitely can't get that any anymore. It's yeah. um, I forget that I, what I was looking at the other day. There was someone who was touring, and um, I think it was one hundred and seventy or one hundred and eighty bucks or something like that to see. And I was like, "What the fuck? That? Yeah, man? I'm not yeah. paying that. That's yeah, that is ridiculous. That's a lot of fucking money. You can do a lot of stuff with with that. It's, exactly. It uh, it should last longer than bloody three hours and, and a night in the Thebi or something. You know, it's, yeah, uh, it's pretty crazy. But how how do you how do you think that we go now um, in particularly in the CBD for yeah. live venues for people to play. I mean, Fowler's has, uh, well, stopped being Fowler's and will continue being something else. Mm. But um, how, how do you see that kind of developing? Um, I, I personally think it's better than what it has been uh, in the last 10 years as well. Yeah. Um, uh, for example, Fowler's, I'm just going to come out and say, I never liked Fowler's. Fowler's, yeah. um, I think, was a dive. And uh, yeah, the... PA is shocking in there and it has ruined a lot of my favorite bands no because shit. of it. So sorry, Fowlers, but that's what I got to say about that. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> um, but the people are taking over it now. Um, I know we'll make a massive improvement on it. So yeah. I'm excited about what Fowlers will become. 
Um, and then the people who took over the cranker the few few years ago, like everyone was worried what might happen there. But yeah, yeah, the crankers like I don't know, like they're just amazing. Like how they've tied in the Crown Anchor, Shadow Apollo, Roxy's, and how like the vibe around it and it's really and, fucking good, isn't it? Yeah, and just the the, the bands they're bringing through as well, like the, all the international bands that are playing there yep. now, and um, yeah, it's just amazing to see and. Um, of course, like venues like the Exeter and, um, you know, places like Jive still doing what they do. The Gov, um, I really like. And yeah, there's, I think there's a lot of really good venues around. And yeah. um, do you see yeah. much of the Grace Emily anymore? Um, <laughs> um, nah, not really. Nah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I choose not to go there, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> is that a story best left for another time I very the much of it? so very much so <laughs> well we'll leave that one there but um yeah for, yeah. for me i mean i i remember oh it's probably four or five years ago and just hadn't you know hadn't been into town for a long time and dropping past the cranker and and the cranker's always been the cranker like it's never yep. going to fucking change but it didn't have uh, there wasn't energy there yeah there was a lot of like oh there was energy it was just a lot of kind of shit energy and mm. and it wasn't that people were fucking angry or it was a terrible place or anything like that but there was just some type of like there always used to be a spark yeah it didn't matter what you're doing you could go to the cranker and it's like fuck yeah it's party time we're at the cranker this yeah. is gonna be a good night and of late like i've been there a few times and and um every single time i go there it's got fucking great atmosphere mm. people are having fun there's shit going on. Yeah. Like they've got stuff going on every fucking night now. And, and yeah. um, the, uh, what was it, Midnight Spaghetti upstairs and people being able to enjoy the whole space of the Cranker again. And yeah. that's that's what I loved and remembered from, you know, way back in the day is, you know, playing pool upstairs and fucking around with your mates and just yeah. being a dick and <laughs> fucking, it's the Cranker. You can get away with anything at the Cranker. Yeah, and they've got, the, <laughs> they've got all the right people in the right, positions at the cranker and the people running it is just like they un they get it yeah so yeah. and that's so important rather than just some unknown person who's in it to either make money or just like tax write-off or whatnot yeah like who cares like yeah that is yeah it's so important that they got the right people in there and there yeah so you you would uh you said that they're one of the biggest supporters of day of clarity yep they are and yep. so you guys would be a long way through getting into the 2019 a day of clarity <laughs> kind of stuff happening is there anything that's uh, that's new on the cards is are we going to get to shut off fucking grenfell street or something or <laughs> um well we've, we've had a couple of meetings and everyone's really excited about it we've started talking to headline acts and that's really exciting yep um there's going to be some um hesitation from council about um shutting off streets because um of a few noise complaints from residents which yep. sucks because that's going to have a massive effect but we are working through that at the moment to try yeah. and compromise and you know we're doing everything we can to you know just listen to them and um hope that uh yeah they let us do it um is it is it like a a noise complaint getting into the night thing or is it just the whole thing is it you know have they just been broad stroke no nah, we've had complaints fuck off yeah i think it's more of just uh like yeah the residents not yeah not liking the sound like we had it we were given a list of um uh like uh things we had to do in order for us for it to work yeah. um like you know um uh, I can't think of the word, sorry. Um, no, no, like restrictions. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, like music off by 10.30, we had to have someone reading the decibel limit. Um, um, and if we went over the decibel limit, we were going to get fined like five grand or something like that. No shit. Um, and we had to pay for someone to be there monitoring it. Yeah. Um, as well as all the liquor licensing and everything that goes from it. Yeah. And um, yeah, everything was fine. We finished well before deadline and everything like that. Um, liquor licensing came, gave us a thumbs up. Cops came, gave us a thumbs up. Um, decibel reading was under. So ticked all the boxes. Um, but because of the few noise complaints that we had, um, City of Adelaide obviously have to look after the residents as well, which, you know, I, compl I do completely understand. But, you know, 
Yeah. It, it's fun. It's such a funny thing because the city of Adelaide is promoting this whole activating Adelaide uh, yep. during um, the whole um, off peak time of year, how they handing off grants Absolutely. to everyone yeah, to yeah, like, yeah. you know, really boost the city and bring people to Adelaide and stuff. And them saying, this is what, uh, like, Day of Clarity is exactly what the city of Adelaide want, but you can't do this. And so that's what we're working around. Yeah. The, it, it does seem that, uh, that sometimes that, you know, councillors, you know, our, our lowest form of government are really good at tying their own hands together. <laughs> and, and they can find red tape and, and issues with a lot of things really easily. Mm. And then other things just, you know, fuck it, build the frome bike pathway. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh, actually, yeah. it's, it's fucked. Let's rebuild <laughs> the frome bike pathway. And like, let's put all these things. There must have been so many complaints of businesses, residents, mm. um, just other anyone using any part of the city yeah, <laughs> through yeah. the whole area every day at five o'clock. Yeah. It is fucked. Yeah. You ruin and the whole thing, but yeah. you can't have a street party. And it must it must be hard, like I, I completely get it. Like Oh, I you wouldn't know, want to be you, the dude in charge of that shit, man. Not That'd at be all. Hard. And, and so I say that say all of that out of the greatest respect and stuff because yeah. the pe- people making these de- decisions, like at the end of the day, no Rocking matter what, hard place yeah, stuff, no matter what yeah. decision you make, you're going to upset someone. So, yeah. you know, I just hope, you know, we can do what we want to do with uh, yeah, Dave yeah. Clarity and they've got, um, you know, yeah, see what happens. <laughs> uh, have you been able to project an attendance for next year? I mean, if every year is kind of going up, would you expect there to be to be more people next year? Um, I think, like, we, we do want to grow it, but we want to contain it as well. Um, yeah. So I think uh, just you know, guessing, since it's a free event, we've got no idea about ticket numbers or anything like that. Yeah. Um, we added probably about 2,500 people. Yeah. Um, so if we can get around about that uh, again, that'd be good. Yeah. And if, yeah. it's still going to be like Exeter, Cranker. Who else did you have there? You had like um, Roxy's and is it? Roxy's Shadow Apollo. Yeah. Um, or, yeah. I think that was it, and and obviously Union Street, and then there was multiple stages within each venue and stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I and mean, that's one of the coolest ideas, let alone pulled off and produced ideas that has been done that that I've seen in Adelaide. Yeah, it bar none. I mean, I I for the last few years I've thought that the Fringe has been absolute shit. Yeah, and that the whole idea about a Fringe festival was to get people that weren't really well known and give them a platform to be able to. Pre- do what they do and perform and 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 um you know as soon as we start constantly getting you know oh we're going to have the garden of unearthly delights featuring peter hellier and will anderson for the yeah. fifth year in a row and like fuck off man like they're very fucking well established people we don't like they can go book out fucking whoever mm. like we're steering away from what this shit is supposed to be yeah and then to go wait a minute what the fuck's this dark clarity thing going on here man <laughs> now that is what we that's what we need to do yeah. and that's how people are going to you know, get that foot in and that's what we wanted to create as well like you know like like you were saying the fringe like it's it, it's it's corporate owned now yeah. and um you know it's it's by far further away from local based uh you know you know talent growing and stuff yeah. like that you know where you, you get to the point where people are having to charge like local people are having to charge like 40 bucks for a ticket like you know yeah. or whatnot like the ticket prices are very expensive and stuff and yeah yeah that's not what a day of clarity is and that's why yeah we want to continue to you know supporting that local what, base what's your know. sales line for the day of clarity like what's your pitch when you go meet someone and you're like fucking all right man i've got to get these people on board it's the people's festival people's <laughs> festival <laughs> comrade festival for the people no i don't know um no, what what I first thing that I always come out and say it's it's a it's a festival in the east end of the CBD that activates um, activates Adelaide in an off peak time of the season. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I'd you can see I've re- grand. <laughs> yeah, you can see I've rehearsed that a few times. <laughs> oh fuck yeah, mate! If if and if you if you're um you know writing for grants and you're doing all that technical writing as well, like you have to put that style of speech into that technical writing and and Mm. transform it into something else and you know it's kind of for a different audience and it's different when you speak it to when you write it as well like it's 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 not an easy thing so you've got to have your 
your face to face pitch. You got to have your official fucking pitch. You yeah. got to have every every different type of communication put forward all at the same time and yeah. perfectly timed. So yeah, mate, it's uh, I know you got to get to band practice and, uh, and do so your I think as I well actually and, got a phone uh, a text just then saying running late see you at eight so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so it's pretty so, casual yeah. band practice uh it shouldn't be because we've got um a tour coming up and <laughs> yeah we've we're actually doing a propaganda cover set because we somehow got our, our arm twisted to um to do this set on a boat cruise like it's it's like no with shit. yeah it's like with friends of rom and um area seven and what a bunch of other, yeah a bunch of other bands on a boat cruise in Sydney and the the thing is that all bands do covers and stuff and women go us we're like there's no way Friends of Rome are going to do covers but okay the promoter wants us to do it so we'll do that and uh, we're the only idiots doing a uh, cover set but you know <laughs> Whatever, it's it's good fun. <laughs> so no one else is doing it. Nah, oh, oh nah. There's sucks. there's a couple of acoustic acts off to the side doing a. Um, How big's uh, the boat? Ah, uh, it's meant to be massive. It's no already shit, sold out and stuff. Cool. I think it's about a thousand people person capacity. Um, yeah, yeah. But apparently, friends of Rome are doing like friends of Rome by request. So that'd be pretty cool. That will yeah. be cool. That, um, they do a couple of covers, man. They do it. Uh, what's their fucking um. Uh, it's like a B-side on one of their singles. Uh, they did do like Home and Away, <laughs> the theme song yeah. to that. Or, <laughs> yeah. Nah, I built this city. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's Imagine what it that. is. Because yeah, yeah. I always find that funny if it comes on in the car and I'm just like, you built this city and I'm fucking <laughs> rocking out. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> that's <laughs> ah, awesome. God damn it. Fucking, is that Sting or fucking someone like that? I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I got no idea. But uh, <laughs> look, man, um, great great for you to come in cool really no, thanks for having it. me and um yeah. is there any shout outs to anyone that you that you want to put forward or um i guess give anyone some shit really uh <laughs> no like hurry up dave like i'm like you know i said we'd be at band practice at 7 30 now you're telling me eight so <laughs> Fucking dave, it's man. cold outside <laughs> yeah dave, dude it is yeah. cold man yeah no fucking could not believe how cold it was this morning i got drenched this morning man yeah uh, terrible. yeah oh man that yeah it came down pretty hard this morning <laughs> yeah i was stuck like i was walking across the middle of the road like middle of the intersection and it just shit down like it two seconds like i went i'll, I'll run no nah, i'm soaked yeah already, man. This, <laughs> fuck me i swear all these people in cars are just piercing themselves laughing yeah yeah i saw it i was sitting there at, i just opened the shop and i was just like looking out there and just thundered down I'm like great that's uh <laughs> there goes all my customers for the day <laughs> yeah man you know it's not yeah. going to be busy when that happens yeah exactly but thankfully it was actually all right but yeah how do you go with the shop down there like near the hungry jacks and that i mean that gets pretty gnarly area sometimes on the weekends and stuff do you uh, have you had any dramas or oh yeah there's been dramas but yeah the police have really cracked down a lot like yeah oh we've had an endless amount of dramas like with yeah. people um you know there's a whole heap of um homeless people who are severely addicted to heavy drugs that uh live at the front of hungry jacks and camp there um and who did cause problems and yeah they have been moved on for um by place and stuff like that and hopefully they're in a better place now i don't know yeah 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 yeah, i definitely actually right near your shop the other day man there was a dude screaming at a push bike and and he was going off at this push bike and i'm like yeah yeah (laughs) i wouldn't like to be that guy i wouldn't like to be in the shops and like um it was pretty much like right at the door of that restaurant yeah and um and there was a girl just like cleaning tables and shit in there just going about her day and this dude was going mental at this push bike (laughs) yeah yeah there was a bunch like literally one morning i was riding into work and um oh gosh and i was uh, i was riding and i saw um Run past Hungry Jacks, and that, that's when police were doing a massive clear out. And I was seeing like one police officer just grabbing like hands, fo- handful of syringes and stuff, putting oh. it like at the front of Hungry Jacks. And it was just like, whoa, like lucky we're not too close to Hungry Jacks. So, yeah. you know, people f- please don't feel scared to come to Clarity because you're not going to step on <laughs> <laughs> syringes or anything. But, uh, yeah, yeah, thankfully they've cleared that up a bit. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah. Cool, man. Cool. Easy. All right, mate. Awesome. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that was a